This is the doodle sketchbook. And the last time I drew something in it was two years ago. Not because I didn't want to, it's just that I don't know what to draw. But I have an idea. What if you ask me questions and depending on each answer I add a new element to my drawing? Well, I think it has potential. So today I'm going to do my second ever Q&A. One, tell us about your daily routine. Well, I'm glad you asked because a lot has changed since I last answered this question two years ago. For instance, I finished high school, got a new dog, lapis, made 45 drawings, two oil paintings and two murals, started two new YouTube channels, stopped swimming, grew 0.4 centimeters and began taking photos. But returning to your question, my day looks a little bit like this. 7.50 am, wake up. Well, hit the snooze button a couple of times, then wake up. 8.30 am, have some breakfast, usually a glass of water, a bowl of fruit and three boiled eggs. Why three? Well, I don't like the yellow part, my dogs do, and I have three of them. One yellow part for each dog. Then I brush my teeth, wash my face and work on emails, videos and drawings. 12.30 pm, go to the gym, skip leg day. 3 p.m. Eat and take a nap, which usually ranges between 20 minutes and 1 hour and a half. Then I wake up and work a little bit more while I eat some pineapple. 7 p.m. Either go out, watch a movie or go out to watch a movie. 9 p.m. Walk the dogs and have some dinner. 10 p.m. Take a shower, draw and go to sleep. 2 to 4. What got you into art? Why are you called Gox? And what are your inspirations? Well, to answer these questions we have to go back. 20 years back. May 11th, 2003. I was born and immediately got introduced to this. My grandpa's paintings, which were and still are displayed all over my house. As every kid, I started playing with crayons and eventually, when I was four, my parents enrolled me into painting classes. I went there for a few months. Then I continued drawing on the walls, canvases and school notebooks. Nothing serious. Until I got these markers. And after that, everything evolved. I started learning how to shade, exploring new art styles and getting inspired by cartoons, movies, music videos and graffiti. People like Basquiat, Cos and Banksy became big inspirations and they all had something in common. They had a nickname, Attack. After realizing this I grabbed a notebook and started sketching name ideas until I came up with Gox. I tried spray painting it on a huge piece of paper once, but this made me realize that graffiti wasn't for me. So instead I started drawing more frequently and posting them on Instagram. Fast forward 6 years, a thousand drawings, 124 videos and we are still here. Same room, same desk, same inspirations. Cartoons, movies, music videos and daily life. Five, how do you film your videos? Well, everything starts here, in the everything notebook. Here you can find my thoughts, scripts, memories, reviews, mood boards, drawings, and most importantly, my ideas. Most of them are bad, but from time to time, I hit the jackpot. And when that happens, I instantly organize it and create a rough outline for the video with their main sections, their duration and a brief explanation of each part. Now we are ready to start filming. I always try to film in chronological order and to cover a variety of shots for each scene. That way I have more room to play with later in the edit. You may think that things like sharpness or camera movement are the most important aspects, but it is much more simple than that. It all comes to lighting. Lighting can make or break your video. And there are a lot of ways to light a scene or a subject. 
We have hard light, soft light, cool light, warm light, natural light, RGB light, hands back, side, down, front or overhead light. You can choose between any of these options depending on your scene and the feeling you want to convey. But there is a golden rule I try to follow at all times. Always film the shadow side. This will give your image way more depth than if you film the light side. And ultimately will make everything look way more interesting. Now composition. Wide shots, medium shots, close-ups, super ultra close-ups. All depends on the emotion of the scene and your personal style. For example, you may have already noticed that I like to use close-ups to build up tension and accentuate moments. Same with camera movement. If the scene is frenetic, the shot is handheld. Anxiety, snorri cam is the way to go. But there's one type of shot that goes with absolutely everything. The static shot. Beautiful, versatile, and necessary. Sometimes less is more, and in most cases, the static shot is your best friend. But I'm no expert, this is just the way I like to do things. So don't be afraid to break the rules and experiment, because sometimes the best shots are the most unexpected. Six. How does your editing process look like? One, two, three. Well, everything you've seen so far in this video has been edited here in CapCut. There is not much mystery on why CapCut is one of the most popular editing softwares in the game. CapCut is powerful, fast, and easy to use. With their clear and intuitive interface, you can create stunning videos while having a good time. It doesn't matter if you're editing for the first time, like my dad right there, or if you've already edited thousands of videos before, like myself right there. But that's not it. CapCut is full of professional and AI features such as masking, tracking, speed ramps, color wheels, auto captions and reframe that can take your videos from something like this to something like this. Not to mention their massive library with built-in visual effects, transitions, music and sound effects that will take your work to a whole other level. But we're not done yet. CapCut is available on mobile, web browser and my favorite, desktop. So you can edit wherever and whenever you want. So what are you waiting for? Go to the link in the description and experience CapCut for yourself. I promise you won't regret it. Thank you CapCut for making this video possible. Gox, can you do the editing breakdown? Oh yes! By the way, that was my voice with an effect I found in CapCut. Incredible, isn't it? Yeah, let's do it. Once your footage is ready, imported and organized, we can start editing. Usually, for the regular art videos, the voiceover is the last step. But since this one is a little bit different and relies heavily on narration, the voiceover was first order business. Doing clear voiceovers is hard and I usually make a ton of speak of miss of speak. So I make sure to identify and cut the bad takes using CapCut's remove filler words feature. Okay, our voiceover is ready. Now what? Music. In my opinion, this is the most important part of the process. Your music choices will affect the mood, emotion and rhythm of your video. A bad music selection can ruin something great. So choosing the right track isn't an easy task. So here are a few tips. Listen to lots of different types of music. Get inspired by the greats. Here are a few suggestions. Try different types of songs in one section of the video. And be patient. Sometimes I spend days searching for the right track. Now we can start adding some videos. So I go to CapCut's incredible AI search bar and search for the right clips. I add that to the timeline and begin crafting the story. Editing is all about rhythm. And to have moments like this, we also need moments like... This. It all comes with intuition. So experiment, edit a lot and learn from your mistakes. 
After you've made a rough cut, we can start adding the final touches. Subtitles using CapCut's auto caption feature, text and graphics, sound design, audio is just as important as video, and adding sound design will make everything more immersive and will take your video to a whole other dimension. Color grading. This is the icing on the cake, the look of your video. Color grading enhances the emotion greatly. So play with different settings until you find a look you like and have fun along the way. It takes me around 300 hours to create a video, but good things come with time. So be patient, because when you see the final product, you always realize that every second of work was totally worth it.